welcome 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 back y'all um back again today with another tutorial we're going to be doing another graduation stole so i'm excited about that um so i will you know warn you that this one is pretty lengthy today so you might want to watch it in parts unless you just got the time but either way like share and subscribe um, so what, I, what you see me now is just gathering materials as usual. Uh, we're starting with the black satin fabric. Um, we're folding it. Um, we're unfolding it from the fold um, from the store and we're refolding it so we can get that optimum length because we want 72 inches um, for the graduation stole. Um, for this front piece. So this this black piece will be the solid piece that we're going to embroider on and the gold will be the trim. So we want 72 inches long here and four inches wide. I will say, however, I will be making this one five inches wide because there's going to be a lot of detail that goes into making this particular stole. So what you see me doing here is measuring out um, the sides so that I can cut off the fray ends and then I'm going to measure each piece um, and you know I'm gonna cut two because I gotta have that back up to the back up just in case anything happens so I cut off the fray ends and I actually noticed that my rotary blade blade is kind of dull so you'll see me follow back through my fabric shears a lot today um, I'll be working on getting some more of those i think i have another one in the in the in the drawer but i just use my shears instead so i'm going to measure out that five inches that i told you normally is four but today i'm going to be doing five because of everything that is going to be going on to this particular stole it's for a master's degree candidate so i'm so proud of um my client um for getting this master's degree and we're going to have a lot of great um, details on his graduation stole. So I'm measuring out at the five inches and then I measure out at the 10 inches and make cuts for both of those. And I am a little stuffy today. It's pollen season so please forgive me with all the sniffing and the raspiness of my voice. So we got our pieces cut. And we're just gonna go in next to put our interfacing on. So after I measure it up to make sure it's good in size. So we're going to, um, this is the Pellon, P-E-L-L-O-N um, interfacing, one uh, <coughs> fusible interfacing. And it actually isn't long enough to, um, 70. <coughs> it's not 72 inches long. Um, so what you'll see me do in a second is just kind of cut it in half and try to make it do what it does because the most important thing um, is, for to, is for the fusible backing to be on the back of the part of the fabric that you will be embroidering on because it gives it that stiffness along with the stabilizer. So we want to make sure that we get the fusible backing on the parts that are most important. So what you see me doing here is the initial kind of um, layout to see how the stole will actually lay so that I'll know exactly where to put my fusible backing. And these are, you see I cut it into two pieces and basically where you see it, that's where I'm going to embroider. Um, but I will end up adding some more in the middle. It just won't be um, connected. So I'm just gonna go ahead and iron the backing on. Um, and then after I iron the backing on, then we'll, we can move on to the next step. Kind of thinking about what I need to do here. And remember it's easier if you actually iron on the satin part. So that's why I'm flipping it over now so that I can iron on the satin part. So 
also got that mini Cricut on. Iron infusing the backing to the satin. And yeah, this is kind of what it looks like after you do that all the way down. And I added that extra piece in the middle as well. So what you're going to see me do now is um, after I smooth this out, I'm going to surge the sides. Um, you see all that f the fray fabric and all of that? We're going to clean that up with the serger. And as always, what you do to one side, you do to the other, right? Who said you never use that, you know, from math and algebra, I think, in school? Definitely been using it a lot since I started sewing. Balancing the equations. So yeah, we surge one side. And then we surge the other side. So after we surge both sides then we can actually prep or in hoop um, the we can hoop it um, hoop the fabric so that we can embroider on it and start uh, completing the embroidery phase of our graduation stole so once I'm done with both sides I kind of just check the length see what that looks like or feels like with the fusing and then this is kind of what it looks like yeah so after that we are going to go ahead and prep our next pieces so you know we um this is this the black will be the front and the gold will be the um the outline and what I'm showing you here is if you look at this um the difference you know you saw the phrase versus the non phrase that's the reason why we search so we start off with the gold fabric the same way we did the black reap by refolding to get that optimum length we made the cuts um the back is always um two inches larger than the front so um, where we normally cut four inches for the back piece of fabric that's going to be the outline it's, it's normally six inches but today but since I did five inches today then of course I'm cutting seven I'm gonna do seven inches on um, on this back fabric but normally it's four for the front the base color the main color and then six inches for the trim color which is which will be the color that trims and both uh, should be 72 inches in length total for each you know so I did cut um, a seven inch piece here you'll see me slide it over just a little bit this ruler is six inches itself and so um, I slid it over and cut to cut seven inches and then I also cut a second piece you know because I always cut two pieces just in case so I got everything I need now um, put my two spare pieces to the side Kind of clean up and then the next thing we're going to do is get ready to hoop it all up so I'm going to use my PE 800 for this particular project today I'm using my PE 800 and my expandable hoop um, it's a 5 by 
12 hoop. So the machine comes with a 5x7 and you can purchase the 5x12 hoops separately. Um, and it makes it easy when you, instead of rehooping the 5x7, you can just actually move the um, 8, 5x12 hoop. It comes with multiple, multiple uh, slits so that you can uh, look at Jordan came to help. This is my daughter, Jayla. She just, she comes to help mama sometimes. But yeah, um, the hoop can actually be, instead of re-hooping, um, taking the hoop off and then putting it back on, if you get the, the expandable hoop, then in your software, um, which I use uh, in Brilliance, it's an uh, in Brilliance, uh, so, uh, in Brilliance software, you, you don't have to, you can make one design and just move the hoop rather than re-hooping it. Which makes life a little bit easier for you. But you know, I had to play with this until I got it right. Got it all smooth and right in, and now it's time to take it to the machine. So here we go. So when you do it in the software, it gives you a top and the bottom that lets you know how you hoop it. So I'm starting with the bottom of the design for this side first, and then um, I reposition the hoop to do the top. And you do all of that in Essentials. Um, hopefully I'll be able to do a tutorial on what that looks like. I'm gonna learn how to screen record working on that guys working on it so all i'm doing now is just threading my pe 800 and y'all i broke my auto threader so i have to actually thread my needles i'm going to get it fixed one day i guess all right so once we do all the positioning we are off And once we get everything, well, not everything, this is just one side. This is the bottom and this is what it looks like. So I just gotta cut a, cut, cut a couple of the jump threads off to clean it up. And then I repositioned the hoop so it could do the top. And this is what the whole side looks like. So one side is done. And then we work on the other side. So yeah. So once we got that side done, I start working on the other side, which has some applique pieces and everything on it. And this is what the total thing looks like. So after everything is embroidered on it, and then after we do this, of course, it's time to assemble. So now we gotta get the back piece, the gold piece, which it will be the outline, and we're going to join the two pieces. However, I wanted a little more length on this. Um, it wasn't quite long enough for me. And so what you'll see me do here is actually cut it in half and I'm going to add a little flare to it. Um, so I'm going to add some gold to the black pieces and some black to the gold pieces and it just kind of going to give it at least um, four more inches while it hangs. So that's what you're going to see me do here. Just cut out some squares and add some interfacing and add it to um, and actually sew it together for a little more length on the uh, graduation stole.
So after you see me cut the pieces and measure them, you're gonna see me add them um, for the length. And all I do is serge them to the existing pieces. And it also adds a design factor to it um, that I really like as well. So we added both sides and then I did it too um, and that's what it looks like after I cleaned it all up and I did the same thing to the the back side because what you do to one side you got to do to the other so I had to do it to the gold fabric as well but adding the opposite color And after I got all of that worked out, had to line everything up, and then it's time to join the back piece to the front piece. And you have to be super careful while you're doing this and make sure that everything lines up because you don't want a cricket piece of back fabric on the front fabric and you know because that of course would throw everything off and once you surge it that's kind of it um, because you're cutting off some of the frays and some of the pieces of fabric so you have to be very careful with this you also have to make sure that the front fabric with his which is the black fabric you have to kind of leave uh, some of it off or hanging out of the sides so that you can cut off the serge ends so that you don't see it when you flip the fabric through. You know, just like I told you in my first editorial when I did the first uh, graduation stole, same kind of concept here, same exact concept here, just, you know, with different fabric. And so once I get one side serged, I'm gonna line up the second side, do the same thing, search the whole entire side. Then it's time to flip it through, iron it out, and yeah, finish the ends. And that's our graduation stole. As always make sure you are being super careful as you're flipping it through you don't want to um, mess up any of your design any of your stitches and so yeah this kind of flipped through fairly easy kind of make sure that there are no open openings or anything like that in the stitching gonna clean up some things that I see you know just some jump stitches throughout the actual 
stole in the lettering. Gonna cut the ends and prepare it to be ironed. As flat as possible. And then you just fold those ends in like this um, when you iron them and then use the fusible tape to close it out or to close it in to, when you tuck in the ends like a sock. And guys, this is what it looks like. I mean, it came out beautiful. I hope you agree. Um, had so much fun doing this one. It took a little bit, but I did it. Yeah, so this is what the back looks like. It's two-toned. And yeah, I really enjoyed doing this project. I hope that you all enjoyed watching me um, get it together here. Um, I really appreciate it. Hope you learned something that you could use. Peace.